So it looks like 50 Cent is not letting up on Jay-Z anytime soon because he just revealed the real reason why Aaliyah, Foxy Brown, and Rihanna got away from Jay. And the details are way messier than anybody could have thought. Apparently, Jay-Z has a raging addiction to messing with naive underage girls, and that's why he got so close to them in the first place. Rihanna, Foxy, and Aaliyah weren't aware of the ulterior motives that Jay had when he approached them. But after they got close to him, they realized how dangerous he was and tried to get away from him. Unfortunately for Aaliyah, she found out a little too late and ended up passing in a tragic plane crash before she could even come out to tell her story. Rihanna and Foxy, on the other hand, are also too scared to speak up. There have even been reports that this is why Rihanna left the music industry and is so hesitant to come back. She knows the kind of things that go down and she wants no parts of it. Now, as most of y'all already know, Jay-Z has been in hot water ever since Diddy started being exposed because of his shady relationship with Diddy and other people in the industry, like R. Kelly and Russell Simmons. This recently got even worse after Diddy's house got raided by the feds, and 50 Cent decided to step into the chat and insinuate that Jay-Z was next. He posted a photo of Jay's face on a milk jar with the caption, anybody seen Jay, lol. Puff said the man ain't answering his phone. Now, now, if y'all are wondering why a lot of people, including 50 Cent, are so convinced that Jay's going down, it's because of all of the allegations about him being in underage girls. These allegations first started when he was exposed for manipulating Foxy Brown, who was just 15 years old at the time, into a very predatory relationship with him, with the promise of making her a huge Hollywood star, very similar to what Diddy did to Cassie. At the time, Foxy was still an underground artist, and Jay-Z was already a household name, so she felt like she had no choice to say yes, or she would just get blackballed. Sources even claim that Jay paid Foxy a bunch of money to keep this a secret and was later confirmed by Jay's longtime friend and ex-business partner, Dame Dash, who got super defensive when he was asked about Jay and Foxy's affair. At what age was Foxy Brown signed? No, I wasn't paying attention to Foxy Brown. Yeah, but that's. I didn't sign Foxy Brown. I know Stop you didn't. I'm just that. asking the you question. I'm on the block. I'm responsible for everybody. <laughs> you the boss. That. I wasn't. Oh, now I'm the boss. I, I thought Foxy was like 16. That's all I'm saying. What that? Did I sign it? <sighs> it sounds like you all I'm saying is like in this industry some, when we live it in it seems like you got, it seems like you got a question for Jay. I, Ask him. <laughs> Don't ask me his questions, bro. I'm not taking it. I'm not just, okay. Y'all can keep asking me questions. We're moving on. Y'all keep asking me questions. Y'all want to ask him because he ain't here. <laughs> ask him. I ain't to do with that and I don't even know nothing about that. There are also reports that Jay got her pregnant and made her terminate the pregnancy. I'm going to expose somebody that we all forget about. Y'all see this picture of Jay? <laughs> Jay-Z with Aaliyah when she was underage? Y'all forgot about Jay, huh? We only know about Damon Dash messing with Aaliyah. And, uh, and R. Kelly. But that ain't the only one that Jay had when she was underage. Yeah, I remember Fox Brown and Jay. Ain't no woman like the one I got. No one could love you better. <laughs> Before that song came out, we used to hear it. I used to tell shit. I was like, Whoa. And then there was Aaliyah, who was also one of Jay's victims. Unfortunately for her, she was unalive by the industry before she could gather the courage to run away. This was revealed by Jay's ex-best friend, Dame Dash, who wasted no time in spilling the tea about Jay's very desperate attempts to get into a relationship with Aaliyah back when she was still very young and naive. He said Jay was inviting Aaliyah over to his parties and trying to seduce her, but she just wasn't feeling him. She always felt unsafe and extremely uncomfortable around Jay, so she preferred to spend time with Dame instead. You know, I guess Jay was trying to get at her as well, and I didn't know. He was sending flowers and he was courting her. Because the room originally was that you were connected to Jay. Exactly. Jay and I were hanging out a lot. He's my homie. We have a lot of fun together, but we never dated like that. Dame also said the reason he stopped being friends with Jay was because he realized that Jay was willing to do anything for power, even if that meant sacrificing the careers of naive girls and associating with predators in the industry. I mean, Jay was one of the loudest supporters of R. Kelly, even after he was exposed for dating and marrying Aaliyah when she was barely 15 years old. J 
Jay even went as far as releasing a joint album with R. Kelly to make everybody know he was on Kelly's side. And in fact, after the fatal plane crash, it was rumored that her death was sacrificial that some of the industry elites had orchestrated. That was seemingly confirmed when it was revealed that she wasn't supposed to be on the plane that day at all. She was given a sedative without her consent, and once she went unconscious, they put her inside. Aaliyah never would have entered that plane that day if they hadn't her. And then there's also Rihanna, who also became one of Jay's victims at just 17. If y'all remember, there were some rumors going around back in the day about Jay making Rihanna his side piece when she was just 17. This was shortly after he signed her to Def Jam Records. At the time, he was the president of Def Jam, so he had the power to either make or break Rihanna's career. This was revealed by Rihanna's publicist at the time, and the news spread like wildfire. It got worse when Rihanna herself recalled how Jay would, quote, lock her up in his office until 3 a.m. But as usual, Jay-Z used his power and influence to make the entire story disappear before it could get any bigger. The publicist who spilled the tea about the affair mysteriously came up and backtracked on everything he had said, claiming he made it all up in a desperate attempt to promote Rihanna's debut single, Ponda Replay. He said, the PR stunt that I did was out of desperation to help break Ponda Replay. He said, in his statement. It was reckless, and I didn't think it was going to work. I was just throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what would stick. But a lot of people didn't believe this at all, because they feel like Jay forced the publicist to take it back. In fact, Jaguar Wright also revealed a few months ago that Jay-Z gave Rihanna an STI when he was messing with her, which she also ended up giving to Chris Brown. I never signed no paperwork. Okay, you never signed no paperwork. I just didn't want to put my family's life on the line. Jay-Z gave her the herpes that she gave to Chris Brown. Rihanna was only 14, 15 when he started and as I said before, a lot of people believe that this is why Rihanna left the music industry in 2016 and hasn't looked back since. She's gone through a lot and endured a lot of trauma, literally at the hands of Jay-Z. I mean, she was signed to the man's management company, Rock Nation, and he pretty much controlled every aspect of her career. But even aside from that, Jay-Z also has a track record of unaliving his mistresses when they become useless to him. Apart from his alleged involvement, and Aaliyah's death, there are also reports that point to him being behind the death of his mistress, Kathy White. At the time, her cause of death was ruled out to be a brain aneurysm, but folk didn't believe that at all, because prior to her death, some very reliable sources had revealed that she was running from her life because Jay was trying to unalive her after finding out she was going public with their relationship. All of these inconsistencies led the popular blogger Hollywood Street King to set up his own investigation to speak to one of the NYPD officers who were involved in the case. And baby, they spilled all the tea. Hollywood Street King posted a whole article about this interaction with the NYPD, and I'ma read a little bit to y'all. The article read, Kathy White died exactly one year from the day when I broke the story of her and Jay-Z's affair. Here's exactly what the NYPD told me. A 911 call came in from an apartment on 130 West 19th Street in Manhattan. Ambulance came and took Kathy because she was sick. They took her to the Beth Israel Hospital and that's where she expired. It was too early to be speculating that a brain aneurysm killed her. They will be doing an autopsy later today to check out her cause of death, but someone might have given Kathy a bad job so they'll do a toxicology and we'll have to wait two weeks for that report. Two weeks prior to her death, Kathy was contacted by a major tabloid that was investigating the Jay-Z connection. She gave them little information to go on, but according to one of our sources, following her conversation with the tabloid, she called Jay and told him that she was gonna go public with the affair for a price. This all happened in the last two weeks. Then, a little more than 48 hours after the announcement that Beyonce was pregnant with Jay Z's baby, this young lady suddenly dies under suspicious circumstances. As if that ain't proof enough, Jaguar Wright also said that Kathy did not die from a brain aneurysm, and she was actually screaming at the top of her lungs before she was expired. Kathy White's life was taken unfairly. She actually died screaming. And the Carters are responsible. But one of them 
is just a little more responsible than the other. Question is, did Sean Carter delete his mistress, his pregnant, his pregnant mistress, because his wife was jealous? Or could it be possible that maybe his wife's temper is just a little worse than most people think? And maybe he just had to clean it up to protect the brand, see? With all these wild allegations and receipts floating around, it's no surprise that the feds are actively looking into him. It's only a matter of time before he finds himself sharing that same cell with R. Kelly. Now, as usual, people had a whole lot to say about this. Like this person who said, someone named Z needs to pay for Aaliyah's death. It's pretty obvious she was removed. These lowlifes need to go down. So many of these types in the Hollywood and music industry, people are losing all respect and interest for celebs, just watching them go down in flames. Another person said, R. Kelly coerced Celia to make a song called Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, and he was close to Jay-Z, and Jay was smashing Foxy Brown when they came out with the song Ain't No Jigga. Then him and Dash had a falling out when Kelly and Jay did the best of both worlds. You know the old saying, birds of a feather flock together. I'm just saying. But now I want to know you your thoughts. What do y'all think about Aaliyah, Foxy, and Rihanna running away from Jay-Z? And do y'all think this is what Rihanna doesn't want to come back to the music industry? Y'all been knew what to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.